Hello everyone and welcome to Living Life. When I was in Sunday school, uh, I had a friend that was very upright, that he did his best not to do anything that would get him in trouble. He would try to be so good about everything that my other friend would often tease him as goody two-shoes. Unfortunately for him, he was still good friends with me and my other friends, and we would often convince him to go on mini adventures uh, to nearby places around our church. And for the most part, we usually didn't get in too much trouble. But every now and then when we did get in trouble, my upright friend would also get in trouble because of us. As my upright friend might have gotten in trouble because he was friends with us. In today's passage, we see how the relationships that you have with others could vastly influence how you may be living your life. And it's not always in a good way. Let us take a look at today's passage together. Second Kings 8.16-29 In the fifth year of Jeron, son of Adab, king of Israel, when Jehoshaphat was king of Judah, Jeram, son of Jehoshaphat, began his reign as king of Judah. He was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done, for he married a daughter of Ahab. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, for the sake of his servant David, the Lord was not willing to destroy Judah. He had promised to maintain a lamp for David and his descendants forever. In the time of Jeram, Adam rebelled against Judah and set up its own king. So Jeram went to Zer with all his chariots. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he rose up and broke through by night. His army, however, fled back home. To this day, Adam has been in rebellion against Judah. Libna revolted at the same time. As for the other events of Jeram's reign and all he did, are they not written in the books of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jeram rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, and Aziah his son succeeded him as king. In the twelfth year of Jeram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, Aziah son of Jeram, king of Judah, began to reign. Aziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother's name was Atalia, a granddaughter of Amri, king of Israel. He followed the ways of the house of Ahab and did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done, for he was related by marriage to Ahab's family. Aziah went with Jeram, son of Ahab, to war against Hazael, king of Aram, at Ramath Gilead. The Arameans wounded Jeram. So King Jeram returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds of the Arameans had inflicted on him at Ramath in his battle with Hazel, king of Aram. Then Aziah, son of Jeram, king of Judah, went down to Jezreel to see Jeram, son of Ahab, because he had been wounded. As we see how Jehoram begins his reign as king of Judah, we see how he was a king who did evil in the eyes of the Lord. It says in verse 18, He followed the ways of the kings of Israel as the house of Ahab had done, for he had married a daughter of Ahab. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. To clarify just once more, Jehoram had began his reign as king of Judah, but as we see from verse 18 that we have just read together, it said that he followed the ways of the kings of Israel and that he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. But if we look at why he might have followed the kings of Israel, we see from verse 18 that it was because he had married a daughter of Ahab. Ahab, the king of Israel, who was known for his wicked sins against the Lord. If you're able to recall from previous devotionals, remember how King Ahab was one of the worst. That within scripture, it says that Ahab was someone who considered the sins of Jeroboam trivial and also that he had done more to arouse the anger of the Lord than all of the kings of Israel before him. It was this Ahab, this daughter of Ahab, that Jeroboam had, uh, Jehoram had married and became families with that influenced this new king of Judah to follow the ways of the kings of Israel, committing evil in the eyes of the Lord. 
You might have come to this realization in your life already, but relationships are so, so important in this life. The people that you surround yourself with, the people that you have relationships with is really important in this life because whether you realize it or not, they will have an influence in your life. The way that they think, the words that they use and say, the things that they do, all of these things are things that you might start seeing in yourself as you are spending more time in interacting with the people you're close with. But the thing is, if we're not spiritually grounded in Christ, if we're not firm in our faith, we may be influenced enough where our relationship with some of these people in our life may lead us to fall away from the Lord. That as we spend more time with worldly people, instead of becoming Christ-like, we are becoming world-like. That as we spend more time listening to people's thoughts and opinions, instead of being led by the words of God, we're being led by the words of men. This is why it's so crucial for us to be able to recognize how the people we're surrounded with, the people that we have relationships with, are people who will not lead us astray from our God, but that they may be people who will be there to walk with us in our faith. We have to be able to recognize how others may be influencing us, and we have to remain grounded in Christ so that our foundation in Him will not be shaken. If we're not careful and we become influenced by the world, the influence we might have received from the world can easily be transferred and flow to the people around us as well. Instead, I pray that we may be able to share with the world of who Jesus Christ is and how life is vastly different with Jesus. Share Jesus in your relationship with others. Share Jesus in your conversations and actions. Share Jesus in how you are living as part of the community. And I pray that the world may be able to know the love of Christ through each and every single one of us. As we're able to make a difference in our relationships by becoming Christ-like, I pray that we may continue to strive to become more like Jesus in our everyday lives. May we be able to lay ourselves down, that there may be less of us and more of Jesus, so that in all of our relationships and our lives, that Jesus may be known. Let us pray together. Father God, we thank you for reminding us of how we are to be people to share the name of Jesus Christ to the people around us. Lord, let us not be the ones to be influenced by the world and the people around us, but in all of our relationships, Lord, help us to be able to share the love of Christ, to be able to share the name of Jesus Christ in our conversations and interactions that we have with the people around us. God, I pray that you will continue to use us to make this world shine brighter because they know the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will continue to use us so that your kingdom may be built up. So God, we just thank you so much. We pray that you will continue to be in our relationship with others and continue to keep us rooted in you. We thank you, we praise you, and all these things in Jesus' name we pray, amen.